Mm -hmm. You see that? And this mortal must put on immortality. So that's the righteous who will receive immortality, not the wicked. Okay, so we understand that. So only God has immortality and, and we will receive it at his coming. When he comes a second time to live forever. Okay, so we move on. So while, while Sarah died and Abraham and those people died, we're going to see them again. Oh yeah, move on. Okay, so, so, so we're going to see now, we're going to look now at how the Tanakh describes what happens when someone dies, right? So how does Solomon describe what happens at death? He's the wisest man, King David's son, yeah? Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7. Ecclesiastes, that's Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7. Um, Psalms, Proverbs, I'm at Ezekiel, so let's go. Psalms, Proverbs. 12 and verse 7. For then the dust will return to the earth and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Right, who gave it. That's what it says. The spirit will return to God who gave it. That's what Ms. Bosella was asking. She was jumping ahead and this is where she was going. The Bible said the spirit shall return to God who gave it. This was the breath that he breathed into man goes back. So Solomon described what happened there. The spirit goes back to God. Okay, so we're going to continue and see. And see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Living soul, yes. Yes, no, it lets it be. Yes. It's dead, yes. 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 Of course, exactly. That's absolutely right. Okay, so we move on. Let's, let's do look at some more scriptures here. Okay, so I'm just giving a summary again. So it says now, the dust returned to the ground. It came from the spirit, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. The Bible does not, this, the Bible does not say that the soul returns to God's spirit. The Bible mentioned the word soul approximately 1,800 times. It never once uses the expression which, which we covered before, immortal soul. For Bible believers, the great hope of the resurrection is at the second coming of Mashiach, uh, Christ, right? When we shall see each other again. So we're looking for Sarah and Abraham and Isaac and all those folks, right? All right, so we move on. Okay, so what is the spirit? Oh, Ms. Vosella's question. What is the spirit that returns to God? Let's look at James 2, verse 26. James 2. I mean, we're saying the same thing that we just said about the electricity and the um, and the um, and the, and the um, and the TV. That's summarizing what Miss Vosella just said. For I said, for for as the body without the spirit is dead, and he continued to say, so that's that's that's, that's the essence of what he's saying. Same as the electricity with the TV. So the body without the spirit is dead. The Lord put the spirit in you, and you come alive. You're a, you're a new person. You you can communicate with Him. Right. All right. So we move on. This is a, a, a deep study, but we're just laying the foundation so we can be prepared for something happening in the future. Next. Okay, so the body without the spirit is dead. That is, the spirit and the bread are the same throughout the scriptures. That's what we were saying. When a person dies, it is God's life-giving power. It's bread that returns. The psalmist David states this in this way, and I think we're going to read that um, separately. Is bread, which is the same word used for spirit in the Hebrew, go it forth. It is not some conscious entity. It is not some immortal soul. The Hebrew word for bread throughout the Old Testament is the scripture, is ruach. This Hebrew word means air, wind, or spirit. 
That's what the word means. Air, wind, or spirit. In Job 27, 3, talks about God's spirits are breast in our nostrils. At that, this spirit or breath returns to God. Let's look at Job 27, verse 3. Job 27, 3, and then we could get we get the full understanding of it. As long as I live, while I have breath from God, my li go on to four? Yeah. Um, you say, it, verse three said, verse as long as I live, while I have breath from God, my lips will speak no evil. And my tongue will speak no lies. But that's what, that's what your verse three says. Yeah. Okay. In the in the in the Hebrew version, it says, "All the while, my breath is in me, and the spirit of God is in my nostrils." <laughs> what what does yours says, Miss? Um, yeah. Okay. It says, "For as long as life is in me, and the breath of God in me." Okay, right. The bread of God in your nostrils. The same says the spirit of God in my nostrils. Some different version we're showing. The spirit and the bread is the same. Same word. It's not different. Okay. All right, so we move on. So it says, all human beings conscious that are human beings conscious of death and how much do they know? Because many people, we, we know people say they can talk to death. That's where we're going now. All right. So I, I, everything, everything you want to know about death is in the Psalm and Ecclesiastes. So we go Songs of Solomon again, which is Solomon. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5 and 6. Ecclesiastes 9, verses 5. And some of these verses, I think most of these verses are in the handouts there. You can follow that handout. Um, it's not in the order that I am doing it, but it's the same principle. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 6. Yes. Five and six. Oh, Ecclesiastes okay. nine, five and six. Oh yeah, okay, let's go. Who found it? Yeah. Live happily with the woman you love through all the meaning. No, e Ecclesiastes nine. Nine. Yes. Five and six. All right, let me hear Ms. Vasilla's version. She have a different version there. Seven, six, eight. The living at least know they will die, but the dead know nothing. Okay. They have no future reward, nor are they re remembered. Verse 6. Whatever they did in... Whatever they did in their lifetime... Loving, hating, envying, and all is all long gone. They no longer have a part in anything here on earth. Okay, we see that, we hear that. The dead know nothing. All their love, their hatred is gone. So if somebody hates you and die, don't worry and fret. So he's coming about to hurt you. The Bible says that's the foundation. Once we understand that, then we, we know we need not worry about the dead person. I mean, I mean when I was younger, when I go to visit in the country, era where the church and the and the um, and in the country too, as you know, family members bury the dead in the in the yard. So so most times when I'm going home, especially when it's dark, right, <laughs> and I'm passing the grave, you know, I get kind of scared. I try shut my eye and run. I run very fast because I don't want the ghost to come out and get me. <laughs> you know? Well, yes. 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 Remove. You erase the, y yes. It's not there anymore. Yes. Right. The hard drive is gone. Yes. It's good. It's good we can use technology. Yeah. Yes.
person. Yes, right. Yes. No, no, it's yes. Th yes, they're gone. Yeah, right. All right, so they said, so, so they know nothing. Okay, so we move on. So, so what about the thought process? Do they continue after that? The person start. Well, well, Ecclesiastes 9 actually tell us no, but we want to do more than one scripture. So let's do Psalm 146 and verse 4. So, so actually, we're actually seeing what David and his son thinks, right? Solomon and David. <laughs> Okay, you know what? Let's 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 do let's do one to four. One to four and we get it. Uh, yes, one Psalm one forty six, yes. Praise Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord while I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not trust in princes. An immoral man in whom there is no salvation. The spirit departs, he returns to earth. In the very day his thoughts perish. Right, that's what Miss Doris was saying. That very day his thoughts perish, erased like the computer. You don't, you don't know anything, he's dead. So he's not going to remember that he, you know, somebody would die and say, If I die, I'm going to come back for you. He's not, he's not going <laughs> to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's dead. It's thoughts perish. You don't know anything. All right. So, so we move on then. We 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 come in, we come into a close. Okay, now. So we know if if all of that is out, we know the answer to this. So we don't even have to read it, but you can write it down. Can the dead worship God? Exactly not. Cannot. And we have Psalm again, the Psalm of David. Okay, so we move on. I think I think I may have the summary. Okay, so it is not the dead who praise the Lord. No one remembers you when he's dead. Who praises you from the grave? That's what Psalm, that Psalm just said. Psalm 115, verse 17. God mercifully shuts our eyes at death to all of the sorrow, heartache, and disappointment on earth. Since the dead know not anything, and in the grave there is no remembrance of you, it is only logical that the dead praise not the Lord. Of course, that's what we have been talking about. Foundation. All right, so we move on now. Are we getting to our nitty-gritty? Okay, so what does the Bible compare death to? The Bible compares death to something. John 11, verse 11 to 14. John chapter 11, verses 11 to 14. And, and again, those who are watching us online, this is the scripture of truth, Kahal Emet. We are here every Saturday, um, 1145. We are live, so I want you to join us every week. Live at around 11.45. Yes, David. John chapter 11, 11 to 14. Then he said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, mm -hmm. but now I will go and wake him up. The disciple said, Lord, if he is sleeping, that means he is getting better. Right, they didn't understand Christ's terms. You see, that's why we need to understand terms. All right, I think he's they, talk, uh -huh. they thought Jesus meant Lazarus was having a good night rest. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, you know, let, let me Lazarus clear it up. Lazarus is mm -hmm. dead. Yes, plainly. No, I'm saying Lazarus he's dead. Lazarus had died. Yes. Then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For And for your sake, I am glad I wasn't there because... This will give you another opportunity to believe in me. Come, let us go and see. Right. We're going to raise him now and they're going to see the reward. Continue. And the reward. Oh, that's it. So we say that the, the Bible compares death to a sleep. Because when, okay, I, I think we're going to see. When, when we sleep, apart from maybe we're dreaming, we do not know nothing that's going on around us. We only wake up the next morning. Right? So the same is going to be for those who, are who have died. 
when they, when they wake up the next morning, they're not going to think that they're dead ten, to, a thousand years ago. They're going to think that they were sleeping and waking up the next morning. Rest in peace. Right. Yeah, they're going to think they're waking up the next morning. That the, the, next, the next memory they're going to see is Jesus coming, and they're going to think that it was yesterday. Yes. Mm-hmm. When he comes. They will they will be arise they will they will arise but not at the same time with the, with, the, with the righteous. They will come back up. Mm-hmm. But when they but when when they are resurrected, they're not gonna be the judgment throne, yes, but they're not gonna get eternal life or immortality. Yes. Okay, so we move on. So so, so this is the, the, the comparison talking about Lazarus is dead. So the Bible compares death to a sleep. More than 50 times you can find it in the Bible. And to, the, to us, the believers, the death is no more to be feared than a sound sleep. That's what I was trying to tell you, right? When we are sleeping soundly, we are not aware of the time passing at all. We are at rest, complete rest. That's what you said. Rest, complete rest. We wake up the next morning and sometimes we say, man, the time passed already. I just lay down and it's 8 o'clock. You know? All right, so we move on. Okay, so Ms. Vosella mentioned Revelation. So it says, how does Revelation's last message to the world describes death? Revelation. Huh? Um, um, I'm not, I, I think that one is in first Corinthians. Yeah, Revelation 14 and verse 3. I think this may have to do with Sarah too. Let's see. Let me see. 13, sorry. It's 13, yes. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord from now on. Yes, say, says the Spirit, so that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow. All right, so that's now. Now we understand why the Kaye Sarah talks about her death and not her life, what thing that she did, because it says the, their works follow them. That's what we're talking about. Her good works follow her to her son and the other generations, right? And ladies today can learn from Sarah, right? And her life, it says the dead, their works follow them. Not they themselves, but the works that they did, the good deeds that they did, they, it follows them. Good or bad. But most people prefer to the good. <laughs> All right, so their works follow them. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so what do we do now while we're alive? That's what's going to follow us when we're dead. People, what, what people want to remember of us is what we do when we're alive. Amen? So we should do good. All right, so we move on. And it said, this same spirit that rose Christ from the dead... We'll quicken the your mortal body. Oh, we'll, we'll raise those. We'll, we'll also raise those people. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. Yes. Right, which is, which, is the, which, which is the comforter. Uh-huh. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit. So, would you say the Holy Spirit? Uh, okay. When Christ um, breathed in man and man become living, was that the Holy Spirit? No, I wouldn't say that's the Holy Spirit. That's just the breath. The breath. The natural breath, yes. So would we say now the breath and the spirit, which now is the Holy Spirit, are two different... The, the breath? Yeah. The breath and the Holy Spirit are two different things, yes. 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 Okay. The breath and the Holy Spirit are two different, but it's the spirit who's going to raise us up mm-hmm. from the dead through the, through the comforter. Okay. Which is the same, Yeshua, indirectly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Revelation 1.18. Who has the keys to the grave? We know that. Gave it, right. And the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit now. That's a two different thing now you're talking about. That's a two different spirits. Yes, yes. So there. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah two different set ten. One is the bread and one is the living spirit himself. The living spirit of God. Yes. What is two different? Yes, because if it was so, um, if the if if the bread was the spirit, then the, the Bible says he only gave his spirit to those who obey him. Exactly. Right. You see what I'm saying? So so the so the, so the unbelievers. If it wasn't two different spirits, yet man is still living and still have the spirit. But if it wasn't two different spirits, when he when he returns at the second advent, how can we be sure to receive the immortality? That is by accepting him and his life. That's what First John 5 and 11 is saying. When we accept him, he will give us that immortality. Okay, so we move on. As I want to get to the segment of the, the purpose of studying death. Next. So it says, he who has the son has life. That's what the verse says. Is a peaceful sleep until the return of the Mashiach. There is no consciousness of the passage of time in the grave, which we did look at. For the righteous, the next event after death is a resurrection. Death for the believer is no more to be feared than the rest in the arms of the loving Savior. When we accept Yeshua, we receive the gift of eternal life and the promise of immortality. That's when that's that's that's, that's like a summary of what we just studied. All right, so we move on. I want to get to um, spiritism. This is what I want to get to. Yes. That's what we want to get to. Spiritism. Now, what strong warning was given against those who had a familiar spirit and said that they could talk to the dead? Now, because we understand it now, we know, obviously, if they're talking to the dead, they're talking to somebody else. Mediums, yes. So, in the Tanakh, in, in the Torah portion, in the Torah, not the portion, yes, in Leviticus 20 and verse 27, Yeshua s spoke about something that should happen to all those four. So let's read it. Leviticus 20 and verse 27. To show you how serious he was about this thing. Mm -hmm. You saw them talking like, as if. Yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yes. 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 Woman. Now, man or a woman who is a medium or a spiritless shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones. Their blood guiltlessness is upon them. Right, that's all. That's all. God hates it when people try to talk to the dead. They're not talking to the dead, they're talking to somebody else. And that's why the Lord is upset with that. They're not talking because as we study now, if you don't know this, what we just did, you will believe that what we just studied. The, what we just studied is to come to the final conclusion. So let's, let's move on so I can give this summary on the, on the king. Say, all right, so that's what Ms. Ms. Um, Phyllis just read. A man also or a woman that had a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Let's go next. All right, so... This is what it says now. In Bible times, there were spirit mediums. I think David was alluding to the mediums. Who were called witches, wizards, and necromancers. Who pretended to be able to talk with the dead. Right? This was a deception of Satan, even as it is today. For God plainly stated that the dead do not know anything. We have that foundation. All right. So it is Satan's angels. This is the key now. That pretends to be dead people. And trick those who talk to them. So dangerous and terrible was this deception that God decreed that the spirit mediums were all to be put to death. Saul, the first king of Israel, we know the story, was slain because he disobeyed God and he tried to talk with the dead to a spirit medium, uh, the witch of Ender. He said, yes. Uh, we see that in 1 Samuel 28 and 1 Chronicles 10 verse 13 where um, um, I think there was a war going on, right? And he wanted to know if he was going to win. But Samuel was dead. He was a prophet. So he went to the spirit medium. But and if you read the story, for Samuel 28, the, the witch knew that she should be put to death. So when Saul came, I guess he disguised himself first. So she didn't know it was Saul. But afterwards, she recognized and she said, you, you know I, I can't do this because I'm supposed to die if, if you know who I am. 
And he, and he told her, he reassured her, no, don't worry. I'm not going to do anything to you. He's disobeying God again. I'm not going to do anything to you. I want to know if I'm going to live if we go to this war. So he told her to bring up Samuel. So she do her thing like people do today, you know, whatever, whatever. And bring up somebody looking like Saul. It wasn't Saul, based on the scriptures, right? It wasn't Samuel, right? It was somebody else. But the Bible did use the term Samuel. Samuel, Samuel came up and told him, you're going to have the war. You and your son are going to die. And he and his son did die. That doesn't mean it was the spirit of God who told him that. Because the devil can predict the future. Most people don't know that. He can predict your future based on how you, on your actions. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, it is. That's right. And with technology now, people can do all of that too, and trick you. Oh, yeah. so, yes. Because now if you see, on the, if you see TV, you know, watch Hollywood, if, if some of the old movies, right, they can, um, they can impose the person who died a couple of years ago into the movie of today. Side by side with it. Yeah, I think they can do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, some people are curious. So you want to know because you miss her. Yes, yes. Okay, you did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I understand. Many people do it because of that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, she talks to the dead? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yes, yes. Well, I hope you will have closure today because of the understanding that we have because she, she's going to be resurrected when Jesus comes. Amen? Hallelujah. So I said, the message that came through these mediums were messages from Satan's evil angels. So we have to be very careful of all these things. So once we know, we stay away from those things. Amen? All right, so we go on. Okay, so our hope is the resurrection. See what I'm saying? Your, your, your sister. That's the hope. That's your closure. He said, who alone can redeem us from the death and the grave? We know. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Yes, it is Yeshua Jesus who alone hold the keys to the grave. If we believe in him and obey his word, we have the assurance of the resurrecting power and the promise of eternal life in heaven. No human being has those keys. But Yeshua himself. Amen. Yes, right, that's true. But by faith, we must have by faith, we know the resurrection. Next, I think this is the final slide. It's just a question. So then the question is, for those, all those who are online and, and watching, if you have not accepted Yeshua and all those who are here, would you like to accept Jesus' offer to give you the power of the resurrection in your life? Amen? Resur that's your, your decision to make. Uh, God is willing and waiting for you to come. Amen? So I hope, as we learn something today, and we will continue to ask questions and continue to search, and you can use the handouts for more information, and all the scriptures are there. Amen. And we know some people are missing, we call, I have to give them this handout when they come next week, like Leslie, she's working today, she couldn't come, and, and some other folks, right? All right, so we hope to see you again next week, all those watching on Facebook, thank you for watching, and we're going to close with uh, the blessing for the food, and the and the drink. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. Yes, you will be. You know you should have some closure. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. 
All right. Amen. So we're gonna do the. So I guess I guess I guess this message was for you. <laughs> yes. All right. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. We need to know the foundation so we can know what's going on out there. Because the devil is going to use this to deceive a lot of folks. Because you know what he can do? Remember the Bible says, if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. So if you believe in talking to the dead, what he'll do? He'll raise up the dead and the dead will say something that may come true and you believe. Amen? But before we do, and we go in English now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace. Amen. Hallelujah. And we hope you have peace for the remaining month of November. We're moving to the last month of December. Amen. And so we're going to have something to eat. We thank you for watching again. Good day, good night, good afternoon. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>